Headline. Most indicted man on the planet <laughs> indicted again. Uh, and this yeah. time he brought some friends. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, the irony of Rudy Giuliani being hit with a Rico case is <laughs> pretty The world's a funny little good. place, isn't it? This is like a Georgia Rico case, though, right? Yeah. That's like, I don't really count those as real. Like, that's not like a real Rico. Like, according to Georgia Rico, Gunna was going around killing people. <laughs> well, the big difference is that like, the original New York tri-state mafia-style Rico cases that Gior Giuliani made his career with, the main evidence was uh, wiretaps of guys sitting around in gentlemen's clubs and going, hey, we're going to kill this guy. That place in Georgia Rico is rap lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> not quite as good evidence, in my opinion. Just been here, it says... Uh Several of the individual counts stem from false claims of election fraud that Mr. Giuliani and two other Trump lawyers, Robert Cheeley and Ray Smith III, made at legislative hearings in December 2020. Another batch of charges concerns a plan Mr. Trump's supporters carried out to, to vote for a false slate of pro-Trump electors and send forged document to Congress claiming those electors were legitimate. A third raft of charges accused several Trump allies of conspiring to steal voter data and tamper with voting equipment in the elections office in Coffee County, Georgia. Some of the defendants were charged only in connection with a bizarre scheme to harass and intimidate an election worker, Ruby Freeman, who Mr. Trump and his allies had wrongfully accused of fraud. I know this seems bad, but Donald Trump has vowed to release an irrefutable report he says will exonerate him in Georgia election tampering case. Reading from Truth Social. A large, complex, detailed, but irrefutable report on the presidential election fraud, which took place in Georgia, is almost complete and will be presented by me at a major news conference at 11 a.m. on Monday of next week in Bedminster, New Jersey. Based on the results of this conclusive report, all charges should be dropped against me and others. There will be complete exoneration. They never went after those that rigged the election. They only went after those that fought to find the riggers. I suspect that the exonerating document will be possibly procured by unindicted co-conspirator individual one. Could you guys guess who that is? Tom Fitton? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, I mm, unindicted co-conspirator individual one does give me pause because it's like, Tom, what if Tom Fitton's the rat? <laughs> if oh, Tom no. Fitton's the rat, like, I don't believe in anything <laughs> yeah, anymore. Fuck this world. The most solid guy on the crew. <laughs> that would be, but probably not. Probably not. But, like, if if he is, I'm killing myself. <laughs> None left to live for. Yeah. It sounds like it's a report, which presumably means, like, he hired some guy with, you know, sports memorabilia to write up a thing saying uh, he didn't do anything wrong on, like, 14-point font with huge margins. And then this waves it, you're going to wave it around. We'll see. I'm, I'm just, I'm reading, this is from uh, redstate.com's coverage of this. And they said, Trump wasn't finished, not by a long shot. He further railed, why didn't they indict two and a half years ago? Because they wanted to do it right in the middle of my political campaign. Witch hunt. And then Red State says, not to nitpick, nit nitpick, but the same question can be asked of Trump himself. If indeed Trump had irrefutable and conclusive proof that will lead to his complete exoneration, why did he wait two and a half years until after the legal, serious legal issues surrounding his attempted alleged attempt to interfere with the results of the 2020 presidential election reached eyeball depth? I'll tell you, because he's a fucking showman. <laughs> what would be the point of doing that if there hadn't been an indictment? Now you get to pull it out, ta-da, after that? Well, I don't That's know. I mean, showmanship. But I mean, like, didn't he want to be president if he had irrefutable, conclusive proof that the election in Georgia was stolen? I mean, you think he could have dropped that when it mattered? Well, no. I, it's kind of like, um, I don't know if you would uh, yeah, someone would post like a line break tweet where they're talking to their therapist and they realize they posted it at 4 a.m. Let's delete that and post it at prime hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really what have you done for me lately type of game. <laughs> I do like the, uh, the the editor's note at the bottom of this red state piece where it says, editor's note, America won't survive another four years of a Democratic president. We must take back the White House. Um, but yeah, like uh, the, the Georgia Rico case, like, I mean, there are like we've talked about this before. There are a lot of stunning similarities between Trump and Young Thug, not just in the lawyers representing him, but just in the general kind of like if you're a rapper that um, talks about people you've murdered on uh, like a mixtape or something like is that evidence that you have murdered people or can it be used to uh, as motive for you know uh, homicides or whatever and uh, this is sort of similar like if you believe you won the election um, can you say that 
can you can you speak your heart? That's yeah. basically what this case is about. And they were going to make it illegal for people to speak their truth, which is fucked up. Uh, there's a few other people, uh, like because there's a whole slate. There's like 19 different people who uh, are, are catching charges here, are going to be indicted. And uh, apparently they're all going to be tried together. And unlike these federal cases, there there will be the the mugshot, and he will be arraigned in a courtroom with something like uh, like twelve other unrelated cases. You know, like classic classic Law and Order here. And this, these these Javert Jack McCoys going after him. I think we're gonna they're gonna play that to the hilt. But uh, there's just a few other a few other uh, new characters here, like Jenna Ellis. Uh, Jenna Ellis was hired by the Trump campaign in November 2019 after making a TV news appearance defending Trump and misrepresenting herself as a constitutional law attorney. <laughs> I like the cut of your jib, kid. <laughs> it says Ellis did not respond to a request to comment, but in a Twitter post wrote, the Democrats and the Fulton County DA are criminalizing the practice of law. I am resolved to trust the Lord and I will simply continue to honor, praise and serve him. I deeply appreciate all of my friends who have reached out, offering encouragement and support. Jenna Ellis, uh, I may be getting confused with someone else, but isn't she a turncoat? She yes, flipped yes. to uh, Team DeSantis. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then he's not coming. Then he was like, uh, he's cut her off. Like no legal fees getting paid, so she's on her own for this yeah. case. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think anyone was getting <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, like no one, not not even the lawyer. His lawyers <laughs> getting legal fees, yeah. but like, uh, I mean, it would be really funny if he success him and like 17 others successfully pin everything on Jenna yep. Ellis. Yep. They all testify against her. <laughs> and then somehow like Ron DeSantis goes to prison. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another guy, uh, this guy named uh, uh, Stephen Cliffguard Lee, who is a suburban Chicago pastor. Lee was captured on a police body camera video when officers responded to a December 2020 911 call at the home of Ruby Freeman, one of the Fulton County election workers accused by Giuliani and Trump of counting suitcases of illegal ballots at a vote processing site in Atlanta. Freeman called 911 after Lee reportedly knocked on her door. Confronted in his car, Lee told officers he was working with some folks to help Ruby out and get some truth. <laughs> when Freeman refused to talk to him, Lee allegedly sought the help of Harrison Floyd, a former Illinois congressman, congressional candidate and former director of Black Voices for Trump, and Trevian Kuti, a former publicist for singer R. Kelly and associate of the rapper Kanye West, now known as Ye, to arrange a meeting with Freeman, according to court filings. Prosecutors sought to question Lee as part of their investigation into the harassment of Freeman, her daughter, Shay Moss, and other election workers, but Lee successfully challenged his subpoena for a, the special, grand jury, special purpose grand jury. And then, indeed, uh, Kanye West publicist Trevian Kuti has been charged in the Trump indictment for, indictment for pressuring Fulton County election worker Ruby Freeman. So these uh, the th these three guys, the Chicago sub suburban pastor, the uh, R. Kelly's friend, some other guy, they were they were going to try to do the thing from Casino when they're torturing the Irish mobster to this guy, presumably, right? Yeah. What if they were they were doing that, but it's not they're not like putting his head in a vice or like squeezing his nuts. They're just giving him like the Pfizer vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they you you to made give me him spike your proteins for Charlie M. <laughs> Charlie fucking M. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's something also very cowardly about the two uh, Chicago suburbs guys going down to like some fucking suburb of Atlanta to threaten parts of the uh, democratic machine. It's like your biggest ops live like 20 minutes from you. <laughs> Those are like your biggest ops, like Chicago. Chicago is filled with like the biggest democratic ops. And you have to go down and like threaten this one election worker. It's, Let's see. It's Osama bin Laden uh, tactics. You attack the far enemy, not the near one. Yes. Yeah. I mean, no one, no one, no one can ever accuse John Cass of not op hunting in his backyard. <laughs> That's all I'll say.